Am I to conclude that you're finished with it? No, don't conclude that. <laughs> uh, I probably now, on the average, spend uh, $100 a day. It's about uh, 2 o'clock now. Have you had any today? Not yet. But yet? Not yet. But you can believe when I leave here, it's probably be my next stop. Now, you're a well-educated man. You have some experience in engineering. Yes. You have earning power, obviously. Right. Why would you be fooling with this stuff? You can stand by and see what's happening to, to your own life, can't you? I used to say the same thing. I used to uh, witness people, and even people who were close to me, have their lives destroyed by it. And I used to witness people sit in these places and spend their last penny. And I say to them, how could you do such a thing, you know? But once you have tried it, you become the anchor banker, you understand. <laughs> it really, it's that much of a feeling or a sensation that it causes, it has wrecked lives, careers, broken up homes. It's, it's just something you can't really describe. What kind of shape is your life in now? Well, I've, I've been a little bit more fortunate than most that uh, I have a roof over my head. Uh, some people who are into crack usually pay their rent months in advance so they don't get evicted, the smart ones. Because, believe me, brother, if whatever money you have in your pocket, you walk in there with, you're not going to walk out with it. So How much do you have on you now? A little over $200. And you're going to blow all of that? In about an hour and a half. What's the most you've used in a day? <clears throat> the most I ever spent was $1,300 in six hours. $1,300? $1,300 in six hours. I can't even describe it. I wouldn't, I defy anyone to try and tell me something the most pleasurable thing that they've ever experienced in their life. However, I would never tell anyone to take it. But I'm, once they have, I, I dare them to tell me that it's not the, the best feeling they've ever had. You love it, don't you? Well, I don't know if I'd say I'd love it, but... Uh, it's well, if it's the best feeling you've ever had, you know what most people <laughs> right. automatically think. Right. And it's better than that? Yes. It's better than that. Then you must love that. Then you must love it. It's, it's, it's nice. Now, I'm going to come down hard on you. Crack has made you its punk, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got your running. It's got your nose open. Right. And it's your master. Yeah. You admit that, just like that. Sure. Some people won't. I know a lot of people who are undercover crack users or in the closet, but I have no qualms about saying that. Do you know anybody who uses crack and controls crack rather than vice versa? No. Crack is the boss. They will make you crack up. <laughs> crack is the boss. When you take that hit, that second voice that starts talking to you is now in control. You're not yourself anymore. Yo, that's some ill stuff, man, and it makes you wonder, because people talk about when the whole situation hit back in the 80s, when scientists, these chemists, that determine that mixing these two different things together will create this, from Ready Rock to Free Basin and all these other things. But this gentleman right here, his name is Bob Williams. He's a NASA engineer, allegedly. And you guys, this clip is obviously pretty old from late 80s, early 90s. And he's being bone cold honest about the situation that, hey, I'm about to blow this money right now. He seems to be a functioning addict, if you will. And he's like, it's the best feeling you've ever had. Now you heard people describe coke given that similar feeling, which obviously this is ultimately coke in another form, right? But to be able to be functioning and just saying that this is the amount, it's like it turns people into zombies. We all know that. It's like you lose completely who you are. It is that addictive that it's better, as he's saying, it's better than anything he's ever experienced. It's the best feeling. He wouldn't tell anybody to try it, but it's the best feeling ever. I don't know any people personally who have fell victim to this, but I do know people who have done coke and it just that bag of heaven as they like to call it or as people who've been on it for years decades and this is some crazy stuff i've watched and i went before we play the rest of this clip i watched something the other day about the cartilage in your nose it's completely eaten away just holes in the nose stuff that affects you for the rest of your life based upon this stuff man and it makes you wonder that this thing could turn a human being literally into a zombie but let's play the rest of the clip you get up in the morning and that's the first thing you think about? Sometimes I dream about it. 
In going to these crack houses, you've probably seen some horror stories. You probably have a whole list of them, don't you? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I do. And I've seen some people as young as, I would say, probably 16, 17 years old. I have been in that crack house on occasion where a young girl came in with her father. And she couldn't have been no more than 16, 17 years old. And she says, no, no, daddy, it's my turn to buy. I've been in a crack house where I saw a girl in a Catholic school uniform come in, and she couldn't have been no more than 16 or 17 years old. And she bought some cracks and left. And she didn't even go home and change clothes for her, so you didn't even send someone else for her. She came herself. I've seen telephone repairmen, the equipment and all, in crack houses. I've seen security guards in crack houses. I've seen transit workers in uniform in crack houses. And I guess it disturbs them not to be there because they are there sitting, smoking away. I've seen people come from New Jersey, go to a crack house, gas tank on empty, and can't even get home. I've seen people go to lunch and never go back to work. I personally have smoked crack in Harlem Hospital in the ladies' room with a girlfriend of mine who used to work there. I've seen women who will come to a crack house with their children and have them wait outside, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Children, have the children wait outside? Wait outside. Children 4, 5, and 6 years old are standing outside waiting for their mothers and their mothers are and the mothers are inside smoking on this crack. I've seen a girl one day brought her baby to the crack house and she was in such a rush to get high that she couldn't wait 20 minutes to cash a check. She pawned her child to the crack man and says, please give me a dime. I'll be back in 20 minutes, hold my baby. Pawned her child. Yes, for $10. Bob Williams died not long after the interview I did with him. A lot of that stuff, when you hear it, it's heartbreaking. Now, a lot of us 80s babies especially have had parents who were doing the stuff that he's talking about or maybe were some of those children in various states throughout the country with this whole terrible thing that occurred in the U.S., this epidemic, as they called it. And it's still going on today. I don't think there's been anything as powerful other than that H, you know, that boy, as they call it, that was going on. And a lot of this stuff dates back to the 60s when people were getting heavy into it. 50s and 60s, excuse me. But this is one of those things, man, that makes you think humanity, what this alters, it makes you not care about anything. You don't care about nothing. This thing basically steals your soul. It steals your mind. And we, when we talk about crack, it's synonymous with black folks, right? Or poor black folks in the ghetto. But you have people all over who've used it. But in the black community, it was hit the hardest. And the fact that, because people ask a lot of times, what causes people to even, you know what it does. Like he said, he had family members. What causes you to try this after you know what had happened? But I don't care if you can take something like this and this can turn a person into a junkie or a zombie. That's something completely different. I think Jeezy, the rapper Jeezy, Jeannie Mai, his husband, famous rapper, he talks about how he was getting secondhand high from dealing with it. And he was saying his mind was telling him to try it at times. And I think he said he did it by accident one time. So this is some crazy stuff, man, about what you can do or what the brains and minds of the devils, as they say, these chemists can come up with this and discover this and give it to someone and say, yo, this is going to be other than these pharmaceutical drugs. This is going to be it. Anyway, guys, let me know if you got a story. Comment below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Much blessings and abundance. Stick around for the next videos that's going to pop up on the screen below. That's where I'm going to see you guys at. Listen, it's your favorite everything. This is wisdom. Let's run it up to 200,000. Quit playing with me. Peace.